Today, we're building an LED kaleidoscope. This 3D printed project comes together with no glue or fasteners and contains wireless LEDs to create fun patterns. The inductive power coil lives in the base. Keep watching to learn how to make your own. Hey, it's Becky, and I didn't design this kaleidoscope. My friend Deborah did, so I asked her to collab on the build video. There's a link to the full tutorial for this project in the description. I printed the pieces in Deborah's recommended iridescent two-color filament to make the outside as stunning as the inside. Then I flew to LA and had Deborah walk me through putting it all together. It's my latest I'm working on. When I finish the combat bot, I pick up all my stall projects. It's a it's a modular set of TPU tiles that you could arrange in theory, when you have enough of them and enough connectors into any polyhedron. But right now it's just an icosahedron. What's nice about this is it's a complicated shape of LEDs and electronics that you could actually bounce. <laughs> and, nothing bad, and nothing bad's gonna happen to it. We laser cut the mirror pieces and clear acrylic circles, but you could also use thinner material and cut it by hand. We have two lenses, good. So you need two of these end pieces that press fit with the three in inverted dots that match the dots in the middle. They press on either side. I start by putting the top side, just pop that into place. Uh, it might help to put it flat on a table. Or tap it with a soft mallet, as I ended up doing. So this is the eyepiece and it's super simple. You just put a lens on and then screw the eyepiece cover on. So that's the eyepiece people are gonna see. So you can use any thickness of acrylic because you don't know when you buy these discs and that's why I purposely did a screw top. So you could laser cut as long as it's between a millimeter and an eighth of an inch. I so that. that was that's part of the design. I really wanted people to be able to make it. You can buy these pre-cut. You could buy millimeter thick acrylic and you can cut them oh, with scissors. scissors in a circle, because yeah. the edges are gonna be hidden. If they're a little cracked up, nobody will see. Because I'd made a previous version that was all laser cut, and the whole point of this was more people have 3D printers, and what can I do to make it so anybody could make it without a laser cutter? Amazing. So, and with or with a laser cutter. Or with a laser cutter, but with readily available materials, and then it doesn't matter what thickness acrylic you That's have. great. I picked up the 3D printer filament and electronics for this project at DigiKey, the sponsor for this video. They carry the parts and tools you'll need to build your own kaleidoscope or much more, and they ship super fast. One of the best ways to support me is to shop with my sponsors. So now the mirrors go in. So you literally should just be able to peel the paper up and they should just slide down. Try to hold them by the edges, exactly. Mine kind of slid in mine very easily, but let me just double check while we're at it. That looks great. That's okay. fine. So that's a little difficult, but it's... we're learning that the tolerances might be different. The tip, I suppose, then is after you print it, cut one. Yes. I think you're like half a millimeter width. And the thing is, you want them to be tight because you don't want them to fall inwards. But if they're too loose, you can just put a drop of glue behind it too, and that'll hold them in place. Now, the one thing that's kind of fun is if you were to print a second lens cover, you could actually use a second one of these you know, put a second lens and you can actually walk around looking so, at anything you want. Great, so now the next step is to, oh yeah, your tolerances are definitely different than mine. So, oh, interesting. So this part. Oh, that's supposed to rotate? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's so Printing interesting. Place. All right, so you know what I gotta do? I gotta go make a version with looser tolerances and put it in there. So if I were making okay. the yeah, this, uh, this, adjustments this. myself, what would I do? This is, it is actually, I believe, a parametric file. So if you were actually working with a fusion file, you could literally, I, if I did this right, I'm not 100% sure about this piece, but I'd like to make tolerance a parameter that you can actually change in a single place. I ended up using a utility knife to shave off just a little bit of plastic around the inner ring so the outer ring could move freely. After the mirrors are in place, the next step is to put the electronics in place because then we're going to put the compartment with the LEDs and the electronics together. So probably easiest to attach the electronics to the base first before attaching the base to the kaleidoscope, although you can do it in either order. So you've already done a nice job of kind of folding the wires underneath the coil, but if you just make a loop through one of these holes, you're going to get 
a little bit of strain relief. If somebody pulls on the wire, you're not gonna break the components inside or anything like that. Wearables teach you a lot about strain relief. Yes, yes yeah. you are. <laughs> you are certainly one to know about that. So you can do it either way. I don't know, yeah, you can do it either way. It doesn't matter. Cool. I took an old five volt AC adapter, cut off the connector and soldered plus to the red wire and black to the minus wire. So if you line the notches, these, these little extrusions on the electronics compartment align with the impressions in the base. If you line this up here, everything else should align and you just push it down. You might have to start like at one part of the circle and then just keep snapping it all the way around. It probably won't all go in one go. It doesn't, right. It's not very hard to do if your tolerances are compatible with your printer. <laughs> I suppose you could wedge this little edge in a bench face. You shouldn't have to. Even. You're not going to be able to get this apart. Is That's the only fine. thing. Okay, there we go. Well, it's going to hold very, very well. Once that's assembled, that's great. Then you can take your wireless LEDs, maybe use a tweezers if your fingers are very steady. You can just place them so that the LEDs all point upwards. And then you take your 3D printed LED covers and choose whatever assortment of shapes you would like. Place them directly over each LED, you know, carefully so as not to knock the LEDs over. I mean, these are so easy to design. If you get the height right and the cavity size right, you could design any shape you want. You could do letters for somebody's name. You could do all sorts of things. That would be a fun way to customize it as long as the cavity is just, just wide enough to hold the LED so it can't tip and the shape is just tall enough so that it's about a millimeter underneath the lens so that it can slide around but won't tip. And so once those are in, you take the lens, place it over the container, and then, yes, if your mirrors are a little looser, they may slide down so you tilt it carefully, but those aren't so tight it won't matter. And then you just screw it in until it's snug. You don't over tighten because you don't want to crack anything. And that is it. You can shake it all around. They will not help. But if you hold it vertically, you can get them in the metal. If you buy an extra set, you could put more in. And that's the assembly. Thanks so much to Deborah for having me over and working with me on this project. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. I hope you'll subscribe with the bell to be notified of my future uploads, subscribe to my email newsletter, and find me on your favorite social platforms. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.